So what stops people from acting is a thing called what? Fear. Fear of losing. Okay? And that fear, that pain attached to that, will stop people from often taking action. Okay? And uh, let me give you a quick example of that. And a great analogy of that. What people are afraid of is this. Let's say an investment property. You have a house. Okay, I'm getting attacked here by... Okay, so that's a house, right? And let's say it's $300,000. And let's say it's an investment property. Let's say it's after rent and tax benefits, it's costing you $300 a month. Okay? That's, say, $3,600 a year. What does the average Australian link to $3,600 a year? Pain or pleasure? They link pain to that. Why? Because it's got a, they're going, I'm already paying off my home, now I've got to pay off another mortgage? One, that equals pain, and two, the fear. What if the property price doesn't go up? Okay, so there's a lot of pe- fear there. They'll do anything to avoid that potential loss or that pain. So a lot of people 10, 15, 20 years ago could have done this but didn't. True? They could have went out and bought a property, but they didn't do it. Now, property on average has doubled every 10 years in Australia. It varies depending where you're on. Does it smoothly grow over the 10 years or tends over two or three years, jump very rapidly, and then flat for four or five years and then jump? True? Okay. Now, if you're not new to property, don't believe what I'm saying. Get out in your suburb. Go and do the research what they were properties in your suburb were worth 10 years ago, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, and you will soon find, my God, it's true. Okay? In most places, in some places, it's actually doubled faster than that. But usually it will spread itself out. So in the last 20 years, they've had been doubling six or seven years in many capital cities in adult. But now it's slowing it down. So you might get a period of what you've had, three, four, five years of flat. So it smooths itself out again. Okay? So the point is, the average person has said no to this. It's like, oh, that equals pain, so they'll avoid it. And didn't invest. But if I was to um, say, I teach teenagers sometimes about financial education and things like that. And if I teach them in a very different way. I help them explain. So if I was to reframe people to look at investing from a different angle and not link pain to it or be so fearful, I would reframe, in other words, like a window frame, change the view or the window that you're looking out at investing and see it differently. What I would say to teenagers is this. When you start saving, you put money into a savings account at the bank and they pay you interest. I want you to think about property investing as this. Just think as as a a savings account, but it's different to a savings account. This account is a special magical account, and what it's called is an investment property loan account. Okay, it's an investment property loan account, and the way it works is this. What you've got to do is come up with $300 a month into this investment property loan account, and you can get as many loan accounts as you possibly can. Okay, there's heaps of them out there. And what you can do, $300 a month you have to put in every month, and at the end of the year you save up $3,600. If you don't put in every month, you go back to zero. But at the end of the year, this magical property investment loan account, the $3,600 you put in there over the year, what will happen is we will credit that account with $30,000. Now think if you're a teenager. Hmm, if I put $3,600 in, I get $30,000 at the end of the year. Does that equal pain or pleasure? Tell me. Pleasure. See, teenagers can get that. But I'm trying to educate fully matured, sorry, fully matured adults, okay? They often don't get that. So what am I talking about? Um, is there such things as a magical investment property loan account? Yes or no? There actually is. It's an investment loan account because what happens over time, if this property goes in 10 years' time is worth $600,000, on average, how much has it gone up a year? 300000 over 10 years, 30000 a year on average, okay? $30,000. You've got an investment property loan account, a magical account. You've had to put $3,600 in, the shortfall in the rent and your tax benefits over the course of the year. Magically, at the end of the year, it's credited $30,000. Now, it's not credited to your actual account. It's credited to the equity value of your home. Is that not the same thing? Who's following what I'm saying here?